Hello, my cats and bats. I'm JP Belmont, the Gothic Bard, and welcome to our very first bat vlog and our very first goth tour. And I also want to wish all of you a happy spooky season. Now, our very first goth tour begins at New England's Treasure Trove, Salem, Massachusetts. Yes, that one town that is not only shrouded in mystery, but also shrouded in history. For once, Salem was known for one of the most darkest times in American history. A time where your neighbor could accuse you of being a witch. And you could be hung at the gallows or burned at the stake, even if you weren't a practitioner. Now, one of the places I visited this time around Salem, because this was my first time, was a place that piqued my curiosity due to the fact that I am currently writing a story that involves this said place. Although I am not the first to, I drew great inspiration and found out a lot of things about this place. I'm talking about the one and only House of Seven Gables. Now, this House of Seven Gables was made famous by Nathaniel Hawthorne. For those of you who might know, he wrote the book, The Scarlet Letter, and he also wrote another book called The House of Seven Gables. Now, part of me and my voice sounds a little hoarse because I have been participating in a haunt, which I have enjoyed, and it's been my first time haunting. And I might say, if you're in the city of Connecticut, visit us at Evans Peeble at Lyman Orchard. Let me come scare you if you don't get to know your favorite local gothic bar. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. I went there with the inspiration to, to write and gain more knowledge about the House of Seven Gables and also to draw inspiration for where I am right now in the plot of my current story. And I want to take you all to see what I saw. Because not only did I visit the House of Seven Gables, but I also stayed at one of Salem's most haunted hotels. Now then, let me take you, my cats and bats, on the journey to the one and only historic Salem, Massachusetts, where we will visit the House of Seven Gables. Take a look. Upon arriving at the House of Seven Gables, I was told by both the curator and my tour guide that I was not allowed to continuously film inside. As I explored the grounds of the mansion and gazed upon the wonderful landscape filled with wonderful gardening, statues, and also a wonderful place where one can choose to tie the knot. Now, for those of you witches and warlocks looking to fasten your hands in matrimony, the Mansion of Seven Gables comes with a backyard that has a wonderful ocean view. Hey, why not get married at the one and only mansion that inspired one of America's first and great authors?
After taking in the beautiful grounds of the mansion, I got to explore the one and only birthplace of Nathaniel Hawthorne. The 17th century cottage, which was the birthplace of one of America's most famous authors, was definitely a sight to behold. With a very tight staircase of two floors and being furnished with furniture, the cradle of which Nathaniel Hawthorne slept, as well as some interesting wall decoration filled with quotes and also facts about Nathaniel Hawthorne. It was a quick visit and then it was off to the gift shop. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I stayed at the one and only Hawthorne Hotel, exactly named after the author himself, which to a lot of people, be it native or local, is said to be haunted. Now, Upon going in there, I definitely did feel something, though. Honestly, that morning before I went up to Salem, Massachusetts, I was in extreme back pain. And I had been suffering with extreme back pain for weeks. And this was way before I went to Salem. But upon visiting the Nathaniel Hawthorne Hotel and staying in there, I felt myself wake up the next morning when I went to go visit the House of Seven Gables with absolutely no back pain and it has been several weeks now since visiting as I am recording um, and editing this video that I visited um, Salem and the Hawthorne Hotel and whatever was in there with me, uh, I know two things, definitely was very peaceful. I also uh, took a rosary with me and I felt a sense of calmness and also uh, I slept with a playlist for those of you who often have to sleep with you know ambiance of music in the background I slept with an ambiance uh, known as music from the 1940s and 50s that you hear in another room Halloween edition and I could definitely speculate that whatever was in there with me whatever spirit was there with me was a fan of 1950s doo-wop and or oldies music and since uh, waking up that morning in the Hawthorne Hotel it was like definitely like I felt like this energy where I felt like a kid again like and it, I felt very like whimsical and just loaded with energy and I had not had any back pain ever since and definitely uh, one thing I noticed was my playlist had stopped playing at one point midway as I was playing it on my iPad uh, I will play you some of it a uh, small sample of it as you can hear in the background I'll, I'll let you hear a bit of it now it definitely you know it definitely what was an interesting experience. It was my first time ever staying at a haunted hotel, and I would definitely say recommend the uh, the Hawthorne Hotel, uh, even though it's uh, very old. It's very nicely decorated, and um, also if you're gonna check in, or rather use your key to open the doors. These doors do not open by themselves. Uh, do not close. All the way by themselves you can have to push them hence because this house is uh this hotel is centuries old and so that was my journey to the house of seven gables and to the nathaniel hawthorne hotel in Salem, massachusetts i will say definitely yeah I rec recommend checking this out also subscribe for more and stay tuned for i will have 
uh, another video for for you guys uh, for the month of October. Uh, two more video uh, videos, hopefully. And definitely, thank you very much for joining me, cats and bats. And until next time, stay tuned for more content and more things coming up. This is JP Belmont saying good night, my cats and bats.